In a serene neighborhood of Cairo, the air was alive with the celebrations of a wedding. Fragrant jasmine mingled with the lively beats of traditional Egyptian music. Under a canopy adorned in elegant white and gold, Miriam stood in her bridal gown, a fusion of excitement and nerves evident in her eyes. Beside her was her husband, Tarek, a man with kind eyes and an easy smile. Observing from afar, with a less joyous expression, was Tarek's sister, Sarah, a woman whose sharp gaze seemed to miss nothing. As the night wore on, the newlyweds found a quiet moment away from their guests. Mariam. Tarek. Can you believe it? We're married. Tarek. Laughing softly. Yes, Mariam. It's like a dream. Mariam's eyes drifted to Sarah, who watched them with an unreadable expression. Mariam. With a hint of uncertainty. Tarek. Does your sister... Like me? Tarek followed her gaze, a gentle look in his eyes. Tarek. Sarah? She's just protective, that's all. She'll come around. When they rejoined the party, Sarah approached with a practiced smile. Sarah. Congratulations, Tarek Mariam. What a beautiful wedding. Mariam. Thank you, Sarah. I'm happy to be a part of your family now. Sarah's smile wavered momentarily, then regained its composure. Sarah. Of course, Mariam. We're family. I'm here for anything you need. The subsequent months were a whirl of new adjustments. Mariam tried to settle in, but Sarah's omnipresence began to feel overbearing. Her help often crossed into control. One day, as Mariam arranged flowers in their living room, Sarah entered. Sarah. Mariam, those flowers. Let me show you the right way. We have a particular style in our family. Mariam concealed her annoyance. Mariam. Thanks, Sarah, but I've got this. Undeterred, Sarah reached over, rearranging the flowers. Sarah. Trust me, this is better. You'll learn how we do things. Mariam bit back a retort, choosing to remain calm. In an intimate dinner with Tarek, Mariam couldn't help but bring up Sarah. Mariam. Tarek, I know she means well, but Sarah's everywhere, in everything. It's like she's marking her territory in our life. Tarek exhaled deeply, rubbing his forehead. Tarek. Mariam. She's just trying to help. She's not used to sharing me. Mariam's heart sank a little caught between frustration and understanding. The narrative shifted with Miriam's discovery of her pregnancy, a moment filled with joy and anticipation. Eager to share the news with Tarek, her heart was full of hope. Miriam, Tarek, I have the most wonderful news. Tarek's reaction was pure joy. Tarek, we're having a baby? This is amazing, Miriam. However, their joy was slightly dimmed by Sarah's reaction to the news. Her enthusiasm seemed forced. Sarah, a baby? How... Wonderful. I'll be an aunt. Miriam noticed the strain in Sarah's smile, an unreadable glint in her eyes. Miriam, trying to stay positive. Yes, Sarah, and I hope our child will bring us even closer as a family. Sarah nodded, but her eyes betrayed her true feelings. It was evident that this new addition to the family was not something she welcomed. In the months that followed, Sarah's controlling nature intensified, particularly around Miriam's pregnancy. She constantly offered unsolicited advice, encroaching on Miriam's personal space and decisions. Sarah. Miriam, you really shouldn't eat that. Let me prepare something healthier. Miriam. I appreciate it, Sarah, but I can handle my own diet and the baby's health. Sarah's interference, however, showed no signs of waning. It only grew more pronounced as Miriam's due date drew nearer. Miriam's journey into motherhood was one filled with joy, love, and a growing sense of unease. In a quiet Cairo neighborhood, the birth of her daughter, Layla, brought a new dynamic into the household. The baby's arrival, meant to be a unifying force, only intensified the underlying tension with her sister-in-law, Sarah. One afternoon, in the nursery, Miriam was gently rocking Layla to sleep when Sarah entered, her eyes immediately fixating on the baby. Sarah. Let me hold her, Miriam. You must be tired. Miriam. It's fine, Sarah. I've got her. She's just falling asleep. Sarah's gaze lingered on Layla a mixture of longing and something darker flickering in her eyes. Sarah. You know, I read that it's good for babies to be held by different people. Helps with their social development. Mariam. Firmly but gently. I appreciate your concern. But right now, she needs her rest. The conversation was interrupted by Tarek entering the room, his face lighting up at the sight of his daughter. Tarek. How are my two favorite girls? 
Sarah quickly adjusted her expression, turning to Tarek with a smile. Sarah, we were just discussing baby care. I was telling Miriam about some modern parenting techniques. Tarek, that's great, Sarah. Miriam, maybe you can learn something new. Miriam nodded, feeling a twinge of irritation at Tarek's unwitting endorsement of Sarah's intrusiveness. As weeks turned into months, Sarah's interference grew more pronounced. She often tried to take over the baby's care, giving Miriam little say in her own daughter's life. One evening, as they sat in the living room, Sarah brought up a new topic. Sarah. Miriam, I think it's time we start thinking about Layla's education. I've been researching some excellent preschools. Miriam. Sarah, she's just a baby. We have plenty of time to think about that. Sarah. It's never too early to plan for a child's future. I've already made a list of potential schools. Miriam exchanged a glance with Tarek, hoping for some support, but he seemed absorbed in his phone. The situation escalated one night when Miriam found Sarah in Layla's room, rocking her awake. Miriam. Sarah. What are you doing? She was asleep. Sarah. She was fussing. I thought she might want to be with her aunt. Miriam's patience was wearing thin. Miriam. Sarah, I've told you before, I'll take care of Layla's needs. Sarah looked at Miriam, a challenging glint in her eye. Sarah, I'm just trying to help Miriam. After all, I'm her aunt. The tension reached a boiling point one afternoon. Sarah approached Miriam with a proposal that left her stunned. Sarah, Miriam, I think Layla should spend a night in my apartment. It will give you and Tarek some time alone. Miriam, absolutely not, Sarah. She's too young to be away from me. Sarah, insistently, it's just one floor down. She'll be fine. Besides, you deserve a break. Miriam, no, Sarah. I'm her mother, and I say no. Tarek walked in on the tail end of the conversation, confusion apparent on his face. Tarek, what's going on here? Sarah quickly composed herself, turning to Tarek with a measured calm. Sarah, I was just offering to help Miriam by taking Layla for the night. She needs rest. Tarek, to Miriam. That sounds reasonable. Sarah is just trying to help. Miriam felt a rush of frustration, her voice tinged with exasperation. Miriam, Tarek, I don't need a night off from our daughter. She's not a burden. Tarek, caught off guard by Miriam's intensity, tried to mediate. Tarek, Miriam, let's not overreact. Sarah has good intentions. Miriam looked at Tarek, feeling a deep sense of isolation. Miriam, this isn't about intentions, Tarek. It's about respecting my role as her mother. Miriam holding Layla close, a determined look in her eyes. She knew that the battle for her daughter's upbringing was just beginning. Sarah, meanwhile, retreated to her apartment, her mind already working on a new strategy. The growing rift between the two women was palpable, setting the stage for a deeper conflict as Sarah's desire to exert control over Layla became more obsessive. The tensions in the Cairo home had escalated to a silent battle of wills. Sarah's manipulative tactics grew more insidious, aiming to undermine Miriam's role as a mother and wife. In the privacy of her apartment, Sarah plotted her next move, a scheme that would alter the course of their lives. One evening, as Miriam was putting Layla to bed, Sarah entered, a look of faux concern etched on her face. Sarah, Miriam, can we talk? It's about your health. Miriam, puzzled, turned to face her. Miriam, my health? What about it? Sarah, I've noticed you've been off lately. You seem stressed, agitated. Miriam, I'm fine, Sarah, just tired, like any new mother. Sarah's voice took on a tone of exaggerated worry. Sarah, it's more than that, Miriam. I'm worried you might be experiencing postpartum depression. Miriam felt a surge of irritation at the implication. Miriam, I appreciate your concern, but I'm really okay. Sarah nodded her expression unchanging as she left the room. Unseen to Miriam, a sly smile crept over Sarah's face. The next day, Miriam found herself increasingly challenged by Sarah's provocations. Sarah deliberately did things to upset Miriam, like rearranging Layla's room or criticizing her parenting. In one such instance, Miriam walked in to find Sarah feeding Layla something new. Miriam, what are you giving her? She's not supposed to have that yet. Sarah, Relax, Miriam. It's just a bit of fruit. Babies love it. Miriam. You should have asked me first. I'm her mother. Sarah feigned innocence, turning the situation around. Sarah. I was just trying to help. You're overreacting, Miriam. This isn't normal. Tarek, hearing the commotion, entered the room, his expression a mix of concern and confusion. 
Tarek. What's happening here? Sarah quickly played the part of the concerned sister. Sarah. Tarek. I'm worried about Miriam. She's been acting very strangely. Maybe she needs professional help. Tarek looked between the two women, uncertainty clouding his judgment. Tarek. Miriam. Maybe Sarah has a point. Perhaps you should see someone, just to be sure. Miriam's heart sank, realizing that Sarah's words were taking root in Tarek's mind. Miriam. Tarek. I don't need a psychiatrist. I need you to trust me. The chapter reaches its climax as Sarah's manipulation convinces Tarek of Mariam's supposed instability. He approaches Mariam one evening with a heavy heart. Tarek. Mariam, I think you should go for an evaluation, for your own good and for Layla's. Mariam, feeling betrayed, reacts with a mixture of shock and anger. Mariam. You can't be serious, Tarek. Sarah is manipulating you, can't you see that? Tarek. I just want what's best for our family. Please, Mariam, do this for us. The next morning, a tense and emotional Mariam, accompanied by a conflicted Tarek, arrived at a psychiatric hospital. As they entered, Mariam's protests fell on deaf ears. Mariam, I can't believe you're doing this, Tarek. I'm not crazy. Sarah is the one you should be worried about. Tarek, it's just an evaluation, Mariam. If there's nothing wrong, they'll tell us. Inside, the clinical coldness of the hospital contrasted sharply with the warmth of their home, a symbol of how far things had strayed from normalcy. As Miriam underwent evaluation, Sarah watched from afar, a triumphant glint in her eye. Her plan was unfolding as she had hoped. The chapter ends with Miriam, sitting in the evaluation room, feeling a mix of disbelief and fear. Tarek, waiting outside, was torn between his loyalty to his sister and his love for his wife. The family's foundation was shaking, and the future seemed more uncertain than ever. Mariam's resolve to fight for her daughter and her sanity was stronger than ever, but the path ahead was fraught with obstacles and mistrust. The cold, sterile walls of the psychiatric hospital were a stark contrast to the warmth and love of Mariam's home. She sat in a small, dimly lit room, her heart heavy with the weight of betrayal and confusion. The hospital staff, distant and clinical, treated her as just another patient, not the victim of a sinister plot. Miriam's days blurred into a monotonous routine of evaluations and forced medication. She felt trapped, a prisoner in a battle she didn't fully understand. One day, her friend Nadia came to visit. Nadia, a vibrant spirit with a keen sense of intuition, could sense something was amiss. Nadia. Miriam, how are you holding up? Miriam. Nadia, I shouldn't be here. Sarah is behind all this. She's manipulating Tarek. Nadia. I had a feeling something wasn't right. Tell me everything. As Miriam recounted the events leading to her admission, Nadia's concern deepened. Nadia. This doesn't add up, Miriam. Sarah's behavior is alarming. I'll see what I can do from the outside. Meanwhile, back at the house, Sarah took advantage of Miriam's absence. She filled Layla's ears with subtle poison against her mother. Sarah. To Layla. Your mommy needed to go away for a while, sweetie. She wasn't feeling well. Layla. Will mommy come back? Sarah. We'll see, Layla. For now you have me. I'll take good care of you. As days turned into weeks, Nadia grew increasingly suspicious. She started to investigate, asking around and keeping a close eye on Sarah's interactions. One fateful afternoon, Nadia's suspicions were confirmed. She discreetly followed Sarah to a clandestine meeting with the hospital director. Hiding at a safe distance, Nadia overheard their conversation and pulled out her phone to record it. Sarah. The money is all here, as we agreed. Just make sure Mariam stays in the hospital. Director. Don't worry, I've labeled her case as severe. She's not going anywhere. Nadia felt a surge of anger and disbelief. With the recording secured, she went straight to the police. The evidence was damning. The police acted swiftly, arresting Sarah and the hospital director. The news of their arrest spread quickly, reaching Tarek, who was overwhelmed with shock and guilt. Mariam, meanwhile, was re-evaluated by an independent team. They quickly concluded that she had been wrongfully admitted. The truth of Sarah's deception unraveled, clearing Mariam's name. Upon her release, Tarek was waiting for her, a broken man. Tarek. Mariam, I'm so sorry, I was blind. Please, can you ever forgive me? Mariam looked at Tarek her heart torn between the love she once felt and the pain of his betrayal. Mariam. 
Tarek, I can't. Too much has happened. I need to think about Layla and me now. In the following weeks, Miriam filed for divorce and fought for custody of Layla. The court, seeing the evidence of Sarah's manipulation and Tarek's misguided actions, granted her full custody. Reunited with her daughter, Miriam worked tirelessly to rebuild their life. She spent long hours talking to Layla, dispelling the lies Sarah had fed her, and rekindling their bond. The chapter closes with Miriam and Layla in their new home, a modest but warm place filled with love and hope. Miriam looked at her daughter, playing happily, a sense of peace finally settling in her heart. Miriam, we have each other, Layla. That's all we need. Layla, I love you, Mommy. As Layla hugged her, Miriam knew that they were embarking on a new journey, one where the shadows of the past no longer loomed over them. It was a fresh start, a chance to live a life free from the toxicity that had once threatened to consume them. The story of Miriam's journey through deception, betrayal, and her ultimate triumph has come to an end. But now, I have a question for you. Do you believe Miriam should have given Tarek a chance to explain himself and possibly forgive him, considering the manipulation he was under? Or was her decision to prioritize her and Layla's well-being above reconciliation the right choice? This is a complex issue, touching on trust, betrayal, and the power of manipulation. Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you've been moved by Miriam's story, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our MES Middle Eastern Stories channel for more compelling content. Your support means the world to us, and we can't wait to bring you more stories that resonate and provoke thought. Thank you for being a part of our storytelling journey.